In this part 15 video tutorial of our one PC to rule them all challenge series, I'm going to show you how to easily create a Windows 10 bootable USB flash drive using two methods. Method one will use the media creation tool from Microsoft themselves and method two will require a third party media creation tool like Rufus. A more correct title should be how to create a Windows 10 installation USB flash drive because there is a slight difference which we will address when we do the Linux version. This title was chosen because it's better for SEO. Please excuse my voice, I'm a little bit under the weather today. Before we continue, my name is Ash from Hill My Tech and if you want to unleash your true potential, consider subscribing, enable the bell notification icon so that I can help you go from newbie to techie. Now back to the tutorial, for method one, you will need a USB flash drive of eight gigabyte or larger. I would recommend 16 gigabyte if you can and I will explain the reasons later, but an eight gigabyte will also work fine. You will need a computer or laptop with a USB 2.0 or USB 3.0 port. You will need a web browser of your choice. Today we're using Google. You will need the media creation tool from Microsoft and you will need a fast internet speed. The faster, the better. A USB 3.0, usually blue in color, will be faster to create and install from the Windows 10 bootable USB flash drive compared to a USB 2.0 black color stick. However, be wary that on certain Windows versions, you may encounter an error message like a required CD slash DVD drive device driver is missing. This can be solved by plugging the Windows 10 installation USB flash drive in a 2.0 USB port on your computer or laptop rather than a 3.0 port. If you still have issues with older computers or older Windows versions, then consider using a USB 2.0 instead of a 3.0. The USB 2.0 will be much slower, of course. Please consider using my Amazon affiliate links in the description below. Now, another advice I would give you if you're planning to use this USB flash drive for multiple installations or to keep for longer, is to get a better quality like this Kingston uh, metallic case one rather than a plastic. This video is not sponsored by the way. I've bought so many cheaper ones before, especially with the plastic cases and because I use them a lot, they don't last very long. I have to keep buying them. But the ones with metallic casing, which I buy, they tend to last much longer. Okay, back to our tutorial. So go onto your browser and type in downloads Windows 10. The first result you get should be from Microsoft. I will also put the link in the description below and you're going to go to this website. This is going to be the Windows 10 May 2019 update. So scroll down to the create Windows 10 installation media and and click on the download tool now. Once your download is done, you can click on it to open the installation file or you can go to your downloads folder and double click on it to open the file and click on yes to accept it. You'll be greeted with Windows 10 setup, getting a few things ready. You will be presented with two options. What do you want to do? upgrade this PC now or create installation media. Since we're not going to be upgrading this PC, we're going to select the second one, which is create installation media for another PC and click on next. By default, you will be presented with this option, which is the default for your country's location. So you can untick the use the recommended options for this PC to go and customize these options. Now I'm going to leave mine as English United Kingdom. Feel free to choose your language. Edition obviously is going to be Windows 10. When it comes to architecture, you have three choices, 32-bit, 64-bit, or both. Now, most people will be using 64-bit. 32-bit is kind of phasing out. However, if you're not sure about the configurations of your PC and what it supports, then you can select both. You can also select both if you're planning to install this on multiple PCs afterwards, which could be either 32-bit or 64-bit. However, do bear in mind that this is where the 16 gigabyte USB stick will come in handy because an 8 gigabyte will not be enough. But for my case, I mostly install 64-bit version, so I'm just going to tick on that one. Now click on next. You have further two options choose which media to use usb flash drive and you need at least a gig or an iso file you'll need to burn the iso file to a dvd later we're going to choose usb flash drive the second option this is for method number two later now at this point you may want to plug your usb flash drive into the port of your computer so click on next usually windows will give you a pop-up notification of a drive just plugged in click on next now, if you haven't plugged in your drive before, you can still do it at this stage and then you're going to have to click on refresh drive list. Now, I know for a fact that the new USB drive I've just plugged in is the one from Kingston. But if you have multiple USB sticks plugged into your computer at this stage, you may want to double check which drive actually you're going to be using. You can do this by going to your file explorer and go to this PC and you can check which drive 
you're actually using we know that this one is the one we're going to be using the kingston f which is close to 16 gig you can also go to the windows start menu and right click on it and go to disk management and once it's loaded you can go and check which disk you're actually going to be using and i know for a fact that this is the one and the reason to double check is because everything on that USB flash drive will be erased. So if you have content on that USB flash drive, make sure it's backed up before clicking on next. Now that you're ready, because our drive is new, we can just go click on next. And let Windows do its thing. The whole process may take anything between 10 or 20 minutes, depending on your speed connection. In the meantime, you can feel free to keep using your PC. This is done in two steps. First, it's going to download the Windows 10, then it's going to create the Windows Media. It's done, your USB flash is ready. Click on Finish. And now before you eject your USB drive from your computer, I would advise you do a couple more things. Go back to your file explorer. And here I would advise that you find your drive, which in our case is this one. It's normally labeled ESD-USB and then whatever letter for your drive. So our one is F here, but I would suggest you right click on it and uh, rename it to anything that you will recognize in the future. I will say, maybe I will just do Win 10 64 um, That would make sense to me. I think it gives you a, a limit to the number of characters you can input and click on enter. The reason to do this is because I have like 12 different USB drives and uh, I can get confused if I don't label them properly. Even if, if they're labeled outside, once I put them in a computer, I can get confused. The other thing I would advise you to do, double click on the actual drive to open up the folders. These are the default folders you will get for Windows installation. I would say at this stage, right click and uh, go to new and create another folder and call it anything you want. I'm going to call it win 10 64 1903 and then I will call it apps. The reason I do this over the years, I've had to occasionally put certain uh, small files in here. Anything could be from antivirus files. It could be a document. It could be anything, absolutely anything, because I use these in standard installation of any Windows 10 on any machine. So it's always handy to have these at hand. Also, it does help in terms of identifying once the USB drive is in the computer port, you can identify by looking at your folders, which exact version you have. And that's it. Now you can pretty much eject the drive. It's safer to right click on it and uh, go to eject and you're done. Now I'm going to show you method number two. And for this method, you will need a USB flash drive of eight gigabyte or larger. Again, I would recommend 16 gigabyte at least for reasons I've already explained and a computer or laptop with a USB 2.0 or USB 3.0 port a web browser of your choice. Today we're using Google, a Windows 10 ISO file, which you will get from Microsoft's website, a third party media creation tool. Today we're going to use Rufus and uh, a fast internet speed, the faster, the better. Now there are plenty of other tools you could use, but Rufus is light, it's stable, it's easy to use. And we can also use Rufus to create a Linux USB bootable drive in our next episode. So go ahead and open up your browser, type in Rufus, click on enter. And that's usually the first result you get, which is Rufus.ie. Go to the website and scroll down until you find the latest version, which is currently Rufus 3.6. It's only 1.1 megabytes, so just click on it and it will download quite quickly. Now, I've already downloaded it before, so you can either click on it to open it or go to your downloads folder and double click on that. Click on yes and you should get a window like that. Now, you will need to get an ISO, so go back to your browser. If you're doing this method too first, then you're gonna have to go to your browser and type in download Windows 10. Again, first result should take you to the Microsoft website, which is this one. And this is the Windows 10 May 2019 update. If I'm not mistaken, this is build 1903. Under create Windows 10 installation media, you have the download tool now, click on that. Now, if you've downloaded it before, you can just go to your downloads folder and double click on that. If not, click on here to open the media creation tool. Since we've downloaded it before, I'm going to use it again here. Double click on that and it should open the window one more time. Now Windows 10 setup will get a few things ready. You'll be presented with Microsoft software license terms. You can read if you want and accept it. 
You'll be presented with two choices, upgrade this PC now or create installation media for another PC. Again, we're not upgrading this PC now, so we're going to select the second one, create installation media for another PC, click on next. Again, you'll be presented with a default setting, so you want to untick, use the recommended options for this PC and then select whichever language and country you belong to. Windows 10 remain the same for edition. And again, with the architecture, remember, if you're not sure, you should select both, but you're going to need a 16 gigabyte drive at least. If you know your version, most people would be selecting 64 bit. This is what I'm going to be selecting today. And then click on next. And here you will be presented with the same two options usb flash drive or iso file we are now doing method number two so we're going to select on iso file and you can potentially also use this iso file to burn to a dvd for a media creation installation disk however we are going to use this iso file in this rufus to create a usb bootable or installation drive so click on next and you can select anywhere you want your downloaded file to go to. Currently, ours is in downloads. Now, by default, the Windows file will be named Windows. So I would advise you again, rename it to something that you will know. For example, I would say Windows underscore 10 underscore 64 underscore 1903 and click on save and let it download. Again, while the ISO is being created, you can feel free to use your PC. Okay, once the ISO file is created, you have two options. You can burn the ISO file to a DVD and you can click on this link to open the location or you can open an existing uh, DVD burner to do this. We're not using a DVD today, obviously. So you can go ahead and uh, click on finish for here. Now you can go to your Rufus window and uh, if you have already inserted your usb flash drive it will come up here again make sure you know which one you are using that's the first thing you should select again do remember this will be completely wiped so if you've got data on the drive you should back it up first now down here on boot selection you want to click on disk or ice or image and to the right click on select and go to the location where you've saved your ISO file, which was this one. So we're going to double click on that. And that is now selected. Image option, it should be standard Windows installation. Not a problem. Now for partition scheme, there are two. There's MBR and GPT. GPT is the newer partition scheme. It's meant to replace the older MBR with some better features. And if you are installing on a new disk or a formatted laptop or computer, then you can go ahead and uh, select GPT. And uh, during the installation, uh, Windows will automatically convert your disk to GPT partition scheme. However, if you're upgrading an existing Windows partition already, you should go to disk management, right click on the Windows start menu and go to disk management and go to the disk that you want to install Windows on. In our case, let's say if it was disk number two, uh, click on it and then right click, select properties and then go to volumes. And as you can see, the partition style here is Master Boot Record, which is MBR. So if you're going to install Windows on there, you should select MBR. However, if you are going to install on a different disk, let's say this one, for example, which is disk one, we select it, right click, go to properties and go to volumes. This one instead is a GPT. So then you should select GPT. In our case, because we're going to be installing on a completely new disk, not an upgrade. So I'm going to use GPT. This you can leave as default. Now the volume label, I would advise you again, label it so you don't get confused. So we're gonna say win 1064 and 1903 for the build number. File system by default, FAT32 is fine and cluster size, leave that by default. Everything else you can leave by default. Now you're ready, click on start and everything will be wiped. It give you this warning, so click on okay. First, it deletes the existing partition on this USB flash drive. Then it's going to start writing the ISO file onto the USB installation drive. Once again, feel free to use your computer while this is happening. Okay, it's now done. It took about 7 minutes and 27 seconds. And you can go ahead and close it. Now, once again, if you want to go back to Windows Explorer, click on this PC and go to your new USB installation drive. And you can see it's here, Windows 10 64. I made a mistake. I forgot about the limitation of the characters. So what you should do is right click on it and uh, rename it. And we're going to get rid of the underscore. So Windows 10 64 and 1903. So I know exactly which 
drive this is going to be not getting confused and one more time if you want to double click on it you get the exact same folders as with the first method so go ahead and right click and uh, go to new and folder and you want to call it windows underscore 10 underscore 64 underscore apps and that way you can recognize the label inside the usb as well as don't forget to label your usb key with something like a fob or a tag or whatever it is as for this folder now you can put any other installation files that you may need and this is why i suggested you have a bigger than 8 gigabyte uh, drive in the first place so once you're done go ahead and uh, eject this drive and you're done so these were the two methods uh, to create a USB installation flash drive for Windows 10. Now, 